City didn't even have to be their vintage best in the first 45 minutes to still be dominating this game. I mean, even they, by, by their standards, were poor in possession, apart from the first 15 minutes. And then in the second half, once they took the game by the scruff of the neck, then there was only one team going to win. I mean, your David Silvers, your Bernardo Silvers and, and Fernandinho's were just absolutely outstanding. I think that's... <laughs> I think that's stretching it a little to say that the goals were mistakes from his team. How was 42 passes before an incredible ball from Bernardo Silva? Smashed in with pace, yeah. a great run from Gundogan, tied to perfection, a beautiful first touch and then sticks it away. How can you turn around and say that that's down to you? And the first one's the same. Again, fantastic ball from Sterling. Nothing you can do. It's, a, it's just such a hard ball to defend. Bernardo Silva gets round the back, cuts it across. Could have been a penalty. Yep. In the end, Silva sticks it in the back of the net. I think how, how can you possibly say that those are your errors? I think 40-odd passes leading up to a goal. I think if I was a United fan, I kind of... And by the way, there was not one challenge mm. that even looked close. Mm. I think I'd be asking some questions. We, we, we just allowing them to, to, to play like this? I mean, don't get me wrong... When John Stone stepped out and Fernandinho sits back in or, or vice versa, whatever it is, their movement is great. But come on, come on. You, you, you got to get out and put some pressure on. But you know what the most galling thing for me, watching Man United in the first half, was when they did get possession, how poor they were yeah. in mm -hmm. possession. You got Rashford and people trying to make runs and you got Matic and Fellaini and Herrera in particular who just could, can't pass the ball. They never asked so many questions all game, really. Oh. You know, there's a, there is that little five minutes when they get the penalty and it's 2-1 and you think, my goodness, after such, after such a dominating performance, because of the situation, the derby, the whole drama, the whole, the whole thing. But Man United never pose any questions whatsoever. People keep talking about, well, they haven't started games very well. And I, and I continually say that's the manager's job. Mm. But I think what's happening with United now is... They're starting games and you must be telling them we have to be safe. Let's not open ourselves up. Let's, let's be cautious. Mm. And, of course, when you play against good teams, the likes of City are, they're going to come at you straight away. And so it looks as though you're sleeping out the blocks, yeah. but actually you're not. You're just doing what the manager told you. Be cautious and don't make mistakes. 12 games, 12 points. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, 12 games, 12 points tells a story. And we talked about it in midweek, and the United fans who can't take the blinkers off and take proper analysis, got to understand, outplayed by Bournemouth for long periods, got away with it and did get better. Outplayed by Juventus, papered over the cracks by their stupid mistakes and their lack of uh, quality in the final third on this occasion, because those, those games could have been dead and buried. And here we have a case where they've been totally outplayed by their biggest rivals, and they didn't even play well. Yeah. By their standards, mm -hmm. if City had played for 90 minutes like we know they can, this wouldn't have been 3-1. It would have been 5, it wouldn't have been 6-1. They're, they're a million miles off where they need to be, and that was exposed today at the Etihad. It was covered over in Bournemouth, it was covered over in Turin, because they got the old pat in the back for the, the gritty, and we got back in it. They got exposed today for what they are. And you know it's what, a pretty you know, average team at this level. 